So hello and welcome guys to a video for Hedge Knight Wargaming. Today I thought I'd bring you something um, a little bit different. It's a bit of a small print um, painting tutorial um, of some 3D miniatures that I picked up from eBay. So I don't know how good these are going to turn out but I will post some pictures in the comments once I've done with them. Um, this is my airbrush uh, booth as it were. Um, airbrushing is something I'm relatively new to. I've had the kit for maybe about 18 months um, and I have to say it's a real time saver when it comes to preparing your miniatures and trying to do bigger projects as it were and to hit time frames if I was, would say working for commissions etc for people. Um, airbrushing isn't a cheap aspect to your miniatures but it is one of those things that you can justify if you were to say it would take me X amount of time to say prime the miniature and if you have a lot of miniatures to get through it's how much do you justify your time if you could generally save a lot of it by doing something as simple as this. Um, I do tend to only use it mainly for priming and for bigger large areas so for instance in this case I'll prime them black and I'll probably do a bit of a brown kind of uh, xenophil maybe the technique um, just to save myself time when it comes to priming them or um, highlighting them and using washes etc. You can get some pretty cool techniques going on these. So, I mean this is the bigger kind of scenery that I've done it all in airbrushing and then highlighted through. Um, this is for Marvel Crisis Protocol. Again you can kind of see the same principle with your cars and things like that. So it's for terrain it's fantastic um, but again you can apply it to most miniatures as it were. Um, my airbrush is relatively a cheap beginner brush, it's um, an ultra 2-in-1 brush um, by Harder and Steamback, they're quite renowned for quite expensive brushes as you get higher up, but this is a kind of workhorse, it will do most of your techniques for it. I do advise the 2-in-1 action, that's typically one that will give you kind of a, a suck and a, well essentially a blow action without pumping paint through so you can dry the miniatures off a little bit quicker than say a single action or a siphon action um, airbrush but there are many different tutorials out there and I have watched many to kind of pick up the techniques I'll be using today. Um, for a compressor anything tends to work but I've got one of the um, Sparmax compressors. This is a fantastic piece of kit. Um, Again, looks super super flash with all the chrome design and stuff, but generally it's just an air compressor. Um, I bought mine as a kit through a company in the UK, I think it was ultimateairbrush.com or something like that, and they did a very good deal where you bought the whole kit as up, and it came to about around 220, 230 pounds. Um, and then things like this, the airbrush brief is about 60 pounds from Amazon or eBay, and then you can pick up bits and pieces like your Kind of your rotating wheel just to make life easier. Um, it has to got truncation, it's going out to an external air source, so again, it's very important that you do take precautions when it comes to paint in this sort of vaporized level because you don't want it in your lungs. Um, but if you're doing it for short doses like I will today, then it's not going to cause too much of a problem. Um, many people use different types of airbrushes, and again, there's no right or wrong in that, I'd say. Um, I tend to use the Vallejo kind of paints for the airbrushes or again you can use the Citadel ones, very important to kind of shake them up and you can use stuff like the airbrush foam improvers and stuff to water down and essentially get things to move and flow better as it were. Um, so I just start by priming these and again we'll kind of pick out the bits that are important here but you don't need a huge amount of paint in these airbrushes, it does go a long way. Um, typically it's a small amount of paint within the actual tip itself um, and again I tend to wear gloves because it will tend to get everywhere especially if you're holding it to a certain level okay and in this sort of situation you just want to kind of gently go over the model applying it from a small distance away and just getting an even spread there are different fine tips that you can tend to get for detail work, uh, but this is kind of just a, an average needle in here, about 40 millimeters, I believe. And 
and as you can see, finely primed model there. If you can see it. But it saves so much time, and again, you can use the two in one action just to dry it off. Give it a few seconds, it'll be ready for the second coat. Again, you can do the whole lot just from an aspect of rotating from side to side and getting each level. And I tend to go over it a second time just to get all the recesses and all the hidden areas onto the model. It's nice to get kind of 360 diagonal going on on this just so it picks out all those areas. And the joys of airbrushing essentially is that it's only one layer and it's only a very thin layer as it were so you won't tend to lose detail on the model which is again one of those positives that you tend to see as you get better with painting is that people aren't just losing detail by just smothering paint on it and there is a very um, kind of principle of kind of two thin coats and taking your time with these sorts of things and just refill that paint If you were to individually paint this and just get an idea of how long it would take you to prime each model just to that point where you're happy with it, it would take maybe 10-15 minutes a model, sometimes even longer depending on the size of them. So if you can potentially get it done in say a quarter of the time, you're saving all that amount of time, potentially an hour at a time to do other things, which again is really good over the lifetime of these brushes, how long they last. And it isn't as daunting as some people think. I mean, like I said, the resources are out there. Use YouTube and use individuals to kind of get you an idea of what the basic would be, how to kind of start yourself up with something like this, um, and then have a go, like anything else. You're only going to know by practicing. I've had a few of my friends ask me about the same principle and what I bought and what kind of advice that I would give. And again, it's the same in everything. Make sure you have a look at all the reviews, research what you're kind of using it for. Uh, make sure you've got space to obviously operate it from. And it is practice. Practice, 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 which is a lot of painting at the end of the day. to do is again get each angle that you tend to miss which is very common with airbrushing is that you will pick out the big bits but then some of the little bits will get missed and I mean that sometimes it's the same when you're using a paintbrush unless you get really bored with it you probably will just smother it on and just think oh that's good but in this case again an evil spread all the way around it looks perfect then because you use the back rest of that black and we're just open up into use a bit of that airbrush to dry them off a little bit quicker for you. So in this sort of situation you might then go away, wipe it all out, wash it all through. Um, typically in this tend to use like a water dropper. Uh, again, you've got swan neck here just to kind of push through. Give it a swill and then essentially just pop it into a bit of a brush. Um, bit of a Tupperware bowl just to kind of get through the black itself. If you don't mind there being a bit of black in the next colour, they're using residually dark colours and stuff, it's not too bad. And sometimes it works quite to your favour if you were to say do something like a colour that's more kind of transitioning, so say like a green or, black, um, or red or something like that, you can tend, tend to chuck a bit of white in there and try and highlight up the levels, which again is quite a cool effect. Um, as I said before, black is fine, and again I can go away and do all that. I'm just going to do the brown, just so it's going to give me a bit more of a transition. Um, and again, it's most of the model will be brown and different variants of highlights on it. So I'm using the Vallejo Burnt Umber, which again is a model airbrush colour. Um, 
you can thin these down further but sometimes it's not always necessary because generally they are thinner so the pigmentation is a little bit I'd say well well met in, as it were if you start watering things down the pigmentation is lost and sometimes it's not the greatest thing to do in this situation so with the brown again I'm not going over whole model as it were I'm just going to kind of pick out just the bits that would be and if you were to have like a really kind of fine needle you would be able to get through all the detail on the miniature but quick as it is just like that it take long. so again your black miniature And there are other techniques like the Xenophil, which is essentially trying to get eagle eye view of the model, as there was say like a light source and trying to just put a lighter colour just over the top of the model pick out on those highlights. I won't do it so much with this because it won't make much of a difference uh, but if you were saying going from like a black to a greyish I would say it's very helpful and again it only needs a light bit of paint over it because you will be using washes and picking out highlights and things. saves so much time. It's ridiculous how much you think of it at the end of the day. And again you can get some quite nice results when it comes to just simple effects. So essentially it's a just this quick layer of paint over the top of it. And you still have, maintain that black dark kind of shadow aspect of the original primer. And again, this is going to be more of a snowy effect on the base, so that's not really important about how it's going to kind of model up from there because it's going to have some texture paint and stuff like that on it. So. Brown is a really nice paint to actually go for because you have all those lovely washes and different transitions that you can kind of go for when it comes to making these really pop. And the browns and the greys are some of the easiest ones to get the best effects from.
the top. So we'll need to pick that detail out later on. Ooh. So you holster your air rush and that's pretty much it. The compressor continuously goes because it has a tank underneath. So as you start using more of the air to obviously push through the paint, the more it's going to top that tank up and it will be a bit loud. So again, take yourself away and lock yourself in the bedroom so the wife then will shout at me. Um, but this will be the last kind of video in the spare bedroom. We're moving out into the um, studio as it were hopefully for next week. So that'll be good. Um, but yeah, generally that's just in a nutshell a bit of um, airbrushing for you. So hopefully you enjoyed that. Again, the results are relatively quick and easy as you can see. That's 12 individual models just primed with a black and a kind of a zenithal of brown just to save me so much when it comes to actually painting these up. They will still probably take about an hour each to kind of do. They are quite simple but the washes and kind of the techniques that you'll be going for in these will design to kind of make him pop and stand out on the battlefield hopefully. So hopefully you enjoyed that one um, and I'll get some more content out soon. All the best, bye bye now.